This conference will now be recorded. Sorry. Okay, so we do like to get these recorded. So let's see if I can go back. So once we determine cash is 94,000, we put the 94,000 here for receivables. Third amount is 20, the balance is 10. We put 10 on the trial balance. And so what you've got to do is for every account in here that, that has a balance in it, you got to put it on that trial balance. The permanent accounts are up top, the temporary accounts are below. The permanent accounts are the assets and liabilities in common stock. Temporary accounts are dividends, revenues, and expenses. So see if you can put all of those accounts on the trial balance in the order that they are in on the chart of accounts, add up all the debits and credits and see if you, you come up with your totals equal on both sides. Your debits should equal your credits. If not, there's a problem. So going back to the T account, Are we clear on what we're doing? Yes, thank you. You clear now, Aisha? Yeah, I am. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Everybody I now go and prepare the trial balance. Uh, what was the equation you put in to put get the total? Okay, for, uh, the cash? equation is, and I'll see if I can come back in here again and I'll just, uh, I'm gonna put it in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is put in an equal sign. Okay, I'm gonna put equal in. And let me just see if I can. trying to get the font to 18. Okay, so I'm going to put the equal sign. You always put the equal sign in and then a parenthesis. Then you click on the total debits. Then we put in a minus sign. Then we put click on the credit. Then we close our parentheses. There's our balance. Any questions? Equal parentheses. Any other questions by anyone? Okay, so let's take about five more minutes. Get all those balances. Then come to a trial balance. Put all the accounts in that are in that ledger. Add up your debits and credits and make sure they're equal. I'm going to put my auto sum in, put it in already. So I got a balance in here right now. It's not equal. So I needed, needed to get equal by having all the accounts in. Are there any questions?
We have those try balances done and our win balance. Let's put our next account in supplies. How much do we have in supplies? 9,000. I think. Mm -hmm. And what's our next asset? Are there any more assets? So let's go to the line builders accounts payable. How much do we have in accounts payable? Three thousand. Look like it might be three thousand in accounts payable. We have a short term note. How much is in the short term note? Twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Then we have common stock. How much is in common stock? 10,000. At this point, retained earnings is zero. Oh, I get this. Dividends is how much? How much are the dividends? Two thousand. We have what one expense, which was what rent expense. Yeah. How much was the rent expense? Three thousand.
not balance here. What did we leave out? What happened? Why are we not balanced? How much are we off? Six thousand. So why are we not in balance? What numbers are different, if any? Why are we not in balance? Those numbers y'all gave me. Well, let's start from, we start below the line for us 80,000. And we have, 80,000. Rent was 3,000. Who said rent was 8,000? Now we're in balance. So what have we done? We've made journal entries. We posted those journal entries to the T accounts to find out how much is in each T account. And then we prepared a trial balance to make sure we were in balance. The next thing we wanna do now is prepare an income statement. Income statement will consist of all items sales on down. They're at the bottom of the trial balance. So when we get ready to do this income statement, we will put in sales of 80,000. Didn't have any returns, still 80,000. We didn't have any cost of goods sold, but you will have those on the other problem. But our gross profit is 80,000. We had one expense, which was rent, and that was 3,000. So the rent expense was 3,000, and so our total expenses were. 3,000. So net income is 77,000. But once we have a trial balance, we simply go from sale. If we had more expenses or cost of goods sold, we would have listed those. 
we subtract expenses from the gross profit to get our net income. How much of this income did we retain in the business? Our beginning uh, retained earnings was zero. We're going to add the net income, 77000 We're going to subtract out the dividends, which were $2,000. So the ending retained earnings is 75,000. Now we have one more financial statement to do, which is the balance sheet, okay? With the balance sheet, we start from retained earnings up and all the accounts from cash to retained earnings. These are permanent accounts that carry over. We put them on the balance sheet and the key thing is that the total assets has the equal total liabilities plus stockholders equity. So the number here has to equal the number on total assets. So I'm gonna put the assets in for you. Cash is 94,000. Accounts receivable is 10,000. And supplies is 9,000. So our total current assets are 113,000. We don't have any long-term assets, so the total assets is 113. I want you to do the bottom of the statement and come up with 113,000. Because the, remember the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. So it's your job to spend five minutes and come up with a balance sheet that's equal. Any questions? Okay, take five minutes and work on the balance sheet. Are you going to post this recording by any chance? Yes, I plan to, especially if you remind me. I got you. But I'll try to get it posted tomorrow, or tonight if it finishes recording. So have we finished this balance sheet? The bottom portion? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back up here now and put in accounts payable 3,000 and the short term notes 25,000. So accounts payable was three thousand. And I'll just put short term note here. Short term note was twenty five thousand. So the total liability is a twenty-eight thousand. Uh, 
our beginning retain earnings was zero. And our common stock is 10,000. So the total wide build is a twenty-eight thousand. The common stock is ten thousand. So if I add these together, I'm not getting one thirteen Y. Why am I not balanced out? It's evident why am I not balanced? I don't know, I'm lost. Say so what? I'm lost. You lost? Mm -hmm. Sheffield, why am I not balanced? Okay. If you remember, the ending retained earnings was 75,000. So even though the trial balance shows zero, to keep ourselves reminded, we're gonna go and put that ending retained earnings from the statement and we're gonna put it in red so it reminds us, so it reminds us that it's not the beginning retained earnings of zero, but it's the ending retained earnings of 75,000 that we need on this balance sheet. So retained earnings should be 75,000. So total stockholders equity is 85,000. Hopefully, 85 plus 28 is 113. So, a key thing here you don't go with the beginning retained earnings of zero, you come up with that new retained earnings from the statement of retained earnings. So, on your problem, you got to do all of these things you got to make the journal entries, post to the ledger. Get a trial balance and prepare an income statement, statement of retained earnings, and a balance sheet. Now let's go back to our T accounts for a second. And in our T accounts, the beginning retained earnings is zero. But we just said that the ending retained earnings was 75,000. So we've got to make some interest now so that this number will become 75,000. So we make closing interest. The purpose of closing interest, the purpose of closing interest is to get this retainer earnings on the books at 75,000. So let's see if we can make some closing entries. And I'm gonna, you can put them here, but I'm gonna put them on the trial balance. I mean on the uh on the trial balance, so you see where the numbers come from. The first thing we close are the revenues. Now sales had a credit balance of 80,000. So to close it, we're gonna debit sales for 80,000. We gonna credit a temporary account income summary, 80,000, okay? But then we make a journal entry, we gotta post it. So we're going to go back to the T accounts. 
we're going to debit sales for 80000 And that's closing entry number one. And we credit you this temporary account income summary for 80000 And we do that because the only thing we want to see in retained earnings is net income and dividends. We don't want to see other things in here because the retained earnings account tells us whether the company has been profitable or not. Okay, it tells us that. So we, you know, so whenever we look at it, we just want to see earnings and uh, dividends. So let's go back to our uh, crown balance and make our second closing entry. And that closing entry is always going to be by the expenses and we're going to close them out. We only have one expense rent and we've got the credit it to close it out and so we're going to debit income summary now for three thousand and credit rent expense for three thousand then we got to come back to the T accounts and post that. We're gonna credit rent expense. So everything below this line, we're gonna close out. So this is closing entry number two. To close out the expenses. Next, we need to move to closing entry three. Closing entry three is always the net income. That's why I have it here. And so we're gonna debit income summary. And we're going to credit retain earnings now. And it's always the net income, so that's why I have it here. So now I'm going to go back to my T accounts. And so closing entry three, I debit the income summary. For seventy seven thousand. And I credit retain earnings for seventy seven thousand. And what's closing entry number four? I got it right down here by the dividends. We got to close it out. The dividends were two thousand, so I'm a debit retain earnings for two thousand. Credit dividends for two thousand. I got to post this entry, so I go back to the T accounts, and I'm going to credit dividends for two thousand. Closing entry number four. And I'm going to debit retain earnings for 2000. So the only entries that are ever supposed to appear in the retained earnings accounts, earnings are losses and dividends. And so these closing entries bring us to the 75,000 which is the 75,000 that's here, the ending retained earnings. 
and the 75,000 that is on the balance sheet. Are there any questions? So that's what you got to do on that problem that you have been assigned. That's what you've got to do. Now for the people who came in late, you know, who are not on a team, uh, you can work on team four for the presentation. Just do some PowerPoint slides. Can you go back up to the closing entries real quick, please? Okay, let's go back to the closing. There are four closing entries. We close the revenue first, debit sales, credit income summary. Then we close the expenses next, we debit income summary and credit rent expense. So we close out the revenue first, the sales, the expenses next for however many expenses it is. Then closing entry three is the net income. And closing entry four are the dividends. Are we clear on that now? Yeah, thanks. So what I will do will be I will save this file, update it like this, and I'll put it in Blackboard. So you'll have the spreadsheet already all worked out and you'll have the lecture to go over and review. Thank you. So on the PowerPoint presentations, if you're not on a team, just go to what a team for was assigned and do me a PowerPoint slide. If you're not on a team, that gives you something. Just go to go to four. You Google it up, get the information for a slide or two since you got here late. Make that presentation. The camera's got to be on when you present. So are there any questions? The second thing that would happen on, let's say Tuesday, Monday, is that you will have, you know what your problem is, your review problem. If you knew or don't have a team, then you do review problem one, which is the easiest one. So if you got here late, you're not on a team or something, you do review problem one. Now the presentation shouldn't take more than 45 to 50 minutes or so. At the end of the period, we would then begin to look at those review problems and see where you are and then look at journal entries. The only way we can do that is if you've got your journal entries worked out. So as a beginning point on next Tuesday, have all your journal entries done. So if you got any questions, you know, I can answer them then. Okay. And of course, we've run over if we need to in terms of covering those journal entries. But you got to have journal entries work and tell me which ones you got problems with. You can't have problems with all of them. The key thing is when you sell something, when you sell inventory, you got two journal entries one the sales journal entry, 
and one for the cost of good soul. So on Monday, it's two things. Number one, you got your PowerPoint slide, you got to present it. Number two, you need your journal entries done for that problem you've been assigned. If you're not on a team, you're working on problem one. I want the you know I want the journal entries done. So what I would probably do then is to put in two submissions for uh, your study problem since you all are just so quiet like I'm asleep. So I'll be able to look at what you've done. So, so if we're doing one with, question, I'm sorry, if we're doing one question, how are we going to be able to do like everything that you just asked us to do, like the trial balance with just one question? I don't know what it's one question. You got one problem. One problem. Yeah. You're going to do, you're going to make the journal entry, put them to the ledger and do what we did here. You don't have one question. You got one problem with oh, okay, 9, yeah. 11, 15, or 16 journal entries you got to do. But we're only you doing don't have one, one journal entry. You got all 15, 16, or however many it is for the problem you worked on. Didn't you do 45 journal entries last semester or so? Yeah, but that was all. Um... Like the middle of semester, though. Yeah. Those were your younger days when you could just work and do things. You just go and do 50 and 60 journal entries. You only got 11, you know, 15 or so here now. So is that clear? Everybody has a problem. Either one, two, three, four, or five. If you knew. Then you, you know, even if you've got been assigned one, if it looks too hard, you can fall back to one. You know, journal entry, one, you know, problem one. But you got to do that, all the journal entries on that problem. So we need more than one person doing one, that's fine, team leaders. But do on. Monday as an attendance quiz for five points will be your journal entries only. You got it? There will be an attendance quiz for Monday where you have you will have done your journal entries. I want to see what you're doing. You know, I don't necessarily have to be correct, but you all are kind of quiet, so I just need to see what you're doing. So any questions on Monday, you got your PowerPoint slide and you got the journal entries done for the problem you work on, working on, so I can look at them ahead of time. So sound like a good deal to me. And remember, attendance quizzes are extra points above the 100. Those are just extra points. So you don't lose any points for doing that. Now we clear now. You got problem review problem one, two, three, four, or five. All those journal entries and everything we did today. Are we clear now? 